My period is really giving me a rough time right now, you know? Good morning, the time is 11 a.m. I haven't been able to sleep properly last two nights because my period pains keep waking me up like every hour and I'm like, Ugh! and then I try to go, okay, that scared the crap out of me. I thought it was a person. But the point is my period pains have been keeping me up so I haven't been sleeping very well. But that, regardless of the point of what we have to do today, today's mission, zoom. I have an interview right now. It's a radio interview. After that, I actually have a gap of time where I'm gonna come home, pop some Advils and take a nap. Then I have another interview. After that, I have, it's a pretty easy day actually, just two interviews, getting ready for my show, doing my show, having a meet and greet, meeting the Golden Ticket winners, coming home, and going straight the F to sleep without watching any Netflix because tomorrow my call time is, wait for it, 5.30 a.m. So aside from all that, I'm gonna nap whenever possible, take care of my belly, and just friggin' calm the uterus. We're heading to our first intro right now. It's a gloomy day, as you can see. Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. I think, fine, that's you. Quite possibly my least favorite thing in the world is when I'm wearing a shoe and my ankle sock has come off in my shoe. And that's what has happened right now. Can you think of something worse? Cause, because I can. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Really, it's nice to meet you. you. Exactly. You are so beautiful. Because I've done the exact same thing. I picked up books and I'm like, oh. So <laughs> nice. Right? Do you like living in LA? It's always hot. Yeah. And sunny, right? And beautiful. Our next guest draws millions. Mm -hmm of viewers to her YouTube channel, uploading videos that talk about everything from parents to dating to being a teenage girl, I mean, you name it. How would you describe what you do? I would describe what I do as I make uplifting comedy content on the internet. Well, I think I was, you know, lucky enough to start at a really good time. I believe I was one of the first South Asian women to do comedy on the platform, and so right off the bat, people were like, there's a brown girl speaking about relationships and things like that, so I think it was intriguing for people. Radio interview done? Give me my points. Give me points. Went to Pole as a club. It's interesting to me. So I'm not Chipotle. It's like, hey, super when you're so different than how you are in your videos. It always intrigues me because I think I'm exactly the same. But like, the difference is when I'm super woman, like, yo, what if I was a girl super woman? Like, I don't have to be like that in person every day. So it always throws me off when people are like, you're so quiet. Sometimes people call me quiet and I'm like, I would never describe myself as quiet or shy, but I get that sometimes. I think what it is is in person. When you see me, if I was to say things, I would say the same things as super woman, but I'm like a chill person, I think. And I think a lot of people get shocked by that. They expect me to see me on the street and they expect me to be like, yo, sis, what you talking? And I'm like, why would I be yelling like that if I was making a video. So like in person, you might get thrown off and think I'm quiet, but I don't think I'm quiet. I'm just kind of like, hey, how are you? Yeah, yeah, really nice to meet you, man. It's kind of like a chill, calm person. Unless I drunk, I angry, I excited, or like I'm at a party or like I'm telling jokes and stories. Then of course I'm like very like that. But if you see me on the regs, I'm probably not going to be like, what up t-shirt reference? I don't want my nose to bleed again. I need to calm down. But yeah, so I think I'm the same, but apparently people think I'm quiet sometimes, which is like, it's interesting, right? Uh. Oh, do you feel that? Do you feel that? Do you do you feel that? Do you feel that? Because I, I feel like it's time for a nap because I have a break right now. Bye! So I don't know what it is. During my naps and during like the middle of the night, I'm not getting quality sleep. Like even in this nap right now, I wake up like every 20 minutes just being like, and I try to go back to sleep. So I'm not like getting that solid sleep. I feel like I'm dying. So I feel like my nap didn't even count. I'm even more tired, if anything than I was when I started. But now I have to be downstairs in four minutes, so let's go. Irresponsible drivers. Some people are straight up crazy. Okay, all the interviews done. Back in my hotel room, I have about 35 minutes before I go back into the lobby. I am so tired, I don't understand why. I had a nap, I had like a decent number of hours of sleep. I need to figure out why I'm not sleeping well. Here's what I think it is. I think I have like some anxiety because I know the next few days are gonna be really, really tough. For example, tomorrow my call time is 5.30. The day after that, it's 4.30. And then as soon as I land, I go straight to wee day. So I think I know the next few days I'm getting no sleep and I think I'm like stressing about that and thus not allowing myself to sleep and maybe I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed about the next three days in terms of like scheduling that I'm kind of like I can't sleep and then even today during the interview I noticed myself based on our conversation before I was like I am quiet right now granted I'm tired but then another reason I realized I'm probably more quiet on show days because I'm very big on conserving my energy so like literally throughout the day I'll be like be quiet close your eyes conserve all energy so that I go on stage I can be like what up everyone what you girls it's all about conserving energy is what it's about I'm gonna take a shower and not touch my face in the shower because my base and my makeup is on already and hopefully that wakes me up because right now Lily uh broke all right so this is the vibes this cool shirt got my silvery shoes and put a white blazer over this but not for the meet and greet because your faces will be on it my throat really hurts I need some hot water and honey also I put a little fuzzy thing on top of the mic right there and I feel like it might be muffled now I will fix it 
and maybe cut a hole in it. So in case it's muffled, I'm not sure. I'd have to wait until the vlog comes out. Stand by. We're heading to the venue. Let's go. This is happening. Let's do it. You guys are the first ones in line today. What time did you guys get here? One? You know, in interviews, when people always ask me, like, isn't it weird to have so much of your life out on a vlog? And, like, how do you decide? I'll tell you how I decide. 99% of the time, when I'm pissed about something, you will never know why. Because I do not believe in putting out negative vibes. I always say how I feel about things, but I will never say the cause of them, really, specifically, because I don't like to throw people and things under the bus. We're about to go do this show. We're gonna have a long talk afterwards. I need a goddamn friend right now, is how I feel before this show. But I know I'm gonna go out there, and, like, always team supers and make me feel warm and fuzzy, like you always do because believe it or not, you are actually one of the best medicines I have. If I'm ever feeling physically, mentally, emotionally bad, all I need to do is either go on Twitter or I guess the more healthy way is see you in person and you always make me feel better. And I'm hoping that's gonna happen right now. Nothing is wrong, actually it's a lie. Things are wrong, but it doesn't matter. You guys are gonna perform. This is show number, I don't know. I say 20, Vancouver. We're gonna have an awesome time regardless of everything that's happening because I truly believe when I go on stage, it doesn't matter what the F is happening. All that matters is me and you, and that is what's gonna happen. So Vancouver, let's get it. And that was a really, really good audience. That was a phenomenal audience. There was so much fun, were they not? I don't know. Shout out to Kyle who had to <laughs> sit on the floor behind a curtain to operate the slideshow. A lot of you tweeted me asking why the boss letters, which arrived by the way, that's one good thing. Mm -hmm. We're on the floor. It was to cover Kyle's paper tent that he made. That's why they were not on the stage. We had art and graphs tent. <laughs> but the parents that were tweeting me angrily, being like, it's cold outside, why make his way? It's because we were dealing with disaster. <laughs> That's why the doors did not open. I was not just here being like, we just make them wait in the cold. It was the reason. The audience was great, so thank you. We were so much fun. I really, really had a good time with you. Like always, you make me feel better about my life. But now we are going to go. We can go into the Golden ticket. Let's go. Winners from Vancouver Art! Come through with the hair ties, come through with the recess. That is today. That is today. Am I sort of Oh, this is today. Oh my god, I have a wedding song. Yes! Wait, wait, this is Kyle's name on it. Ignore that part. Those are delicious, Those actually. Are Where'd you get these from? Oh my god. This is a song I wrote right now. Uh, AKM okay, I'm gonna make up as I go along. How about Ashika? Ashika. How do you say with your... I like your Ashika or you like Ashika? How do you say my name? Ashika. Ashika. Yeah. Ashika. Yeah. Ashika. That's a mad show, which I always think is really, really cool. Like, you need to I love it. Basically, is the rock. Oh, okay. So the muscles? Confirm. Ashika. You hold me down like... I look forward to you unlike a report card. Mashika, you're not a dork. Unless you are, you can correct me, I don't know. Ashika, I love you from my core. And I broke the guitar, so that's going to be the end of this segment with Ashika, but that was my song towards you, and it came from my heart. You don't follow her already, what's going to follow you? Team on Instagram or Mashmason on That's right, and how do you spell Lily? L-I-L-L-Y. MVP right here. Three L's in total, too, but I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah, too. She's the bomb.com. In fact, she's so bomb that I'm going to give her my vlogging camera. Polly, can you hold this? I'm holding the vlogging camera. You can say whatever you want to say. It's yours. This is your part of the Can I go in that little room? Yeah, you can say whatever you want to say. Okay, I'll be right back. This is really trippy to hold. There's people watching me do this. Hi, guys. It's Ashka, aka Team Lily Thing, aka Imagination. How you doing? That show, I won't say it's just the best this time, like I do every time. That was like the most inspiring thing. I was smiling the whole time. My voice hurts because I was screaming. So much, and she taught me a lot today, and it means a lot to me. And I'm gonna tell her that all of you love her so much, and I hope that all of you get the chance to be with her and meet her because she's amazing. Did she talk bear crab? Can we um, redo that pose? I think your arm was around me. Okay, she's like, I, I think you were giving me a check, and your arm was around me. <laughs> there it is, recreation, recreation at its finest. Well, we can reach 180 people. Guys. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Your name? Mariana. She made me this amazing hat. For Canada Day, now you have For to Canada. Canada. Oh my god. We bring you a word from our sponsor, tortilla chips. Another word from our delicious sponsor.
You feel yourself smarter? No. You feel yourself nicer? Yeah. And smarter? No, smarter. Nicer? Nice. Do you feel like you're getting free health care right now? I do. You do, right? Yeah. You feel like you love the Prime Minister now? Yeah. I feel like I'm getting trash weather? Yes. <laughs> when you're about to cry alone in your room for 25 hours? I am. I truly am. <laughs> I don't even know if this is what's going to happen. Oh, my phone. That's my phone dying. Just like my soul. Winning. <laughs> okay, you have the seven cheese ravioli still? No. Sorry, my stupid friend is in the background and going, I'm going to get the seven cheese ravioli, but can I get it in the tomato sauce, so not the meat sauce? And then, do you have cactus cut fries? Yep, I'll take those. You sure you don't want anything, Kyle? I'll eat some of the cactus cut fries. Okay, Lily, don't make this five minute rant. Lily, don't make this a five minute rant. You know those days where you're just like, I'm going to spend the next two hours crying. That's me right now. I'm not saying this you feel bad. Nope, no one should feel bad. This is not a pity party. I'm just telling you, it's healthy to cry sometimes. I'm having that moment where I want to cry right now. I'm not going to get too much into this. Say that, and I'm totally going to get too much into it. But let me tell you what's on my mind. To the extent that I feel comfortable sharing with you. Because, you know, I want to protect myself as well in feelings and not have to share things I don't want to share. But this tour thus far has been so different from A to T Y because as I've expressed before there's certain things that are out of my control with certain territories there are certain territories that are in my control and you will see a vast difference between my show between the territories I can control and the ones I cannot which already right off the bat annoys me because I don't think people should experience my show differently from territory to territory obviously no one cares about you and about my show as much as I do that's not and that's not meant to be in an insulting way that is just factually what it is in life no matter what you do no one will care about your stuff as much as you that is fine but there has just been some unforgivable things in my opinion with this tour where like I don't want to blame anyone I'm not being like this is your fault but there's been like four or five venues where I'm like how and it's not even like how that I'm mad at the venue because to be honest team super probably walked into the venue probably don't even care you probably don't care if the stage has wings you probably don't care what the seating is like you probably don't care what the stage looks like I do though as a performer and someone who went from ATTUI to Go into venues now where Kyle is running the show crouched in front of the stage or in some venues in the audience through a slideshow is simply unacceptable to me. And it's kind of like what has stressed me out the most and what is upsetting me is like, who thought that was okay? It's like, I truly, I can say there's a lot of bad qualities about me, but one of them is not working hard. I work so hard. And when I walk into an event and I see the decisions that have been made about a show that I've worked so hard on and a book that I've worked so hard, I feel personally offended and insulted that someone on my team would think that is acceptable like you have to not know anything about me to think that I'm gonna be okay walking into a mother of them venue and seeing some of the things I've seen or like before a show signing so many books it's like I I am a performer. I am not someone that goes on stage and does a Q&A. And I am not trying to be offensive to anyone who does that. That's great. People love that. But I don't do that. I am putting on a show. And if I'm pulling all nighters to do that and bending over backwards to do that, I need things to be a certain way. And I think what's gotten me so emotional upset right now is because when things don't, how it translate in my brain and I'm not saying this is getting emotional I'm not saying this is what it is but how it translates in my brain is oh then you just need to effing work harder you need to work harder because clearly you don't work hard enough for anyone to take you seriously right now because there's some decisions where I'm like how how did you think that was gonna be okay whether it's the AV not working whether it's the venue size whether it's just like this system of I'm just I'm so excited. And this is no one's fault. I just want, it's no one's fault because it's everyone's fault. And then I blame myself because I think, well, maybe you should double, triple check anything. I, in my brain right now, I'm beating myself up because I'm like, you should have taken hours out of your day, double checked every single venue. Even if someone told you some information, you should have double checked that. And when it comes to ticket prices, you should have double checked that. You should do everything that is not your job because you get the most pissed off about it. And then I beat myself up because I'm like, when? I already don't sleep. So when? When would I have done those things? I am going to go cry. And this is no fault. Team Super, I freaking love you. I would like to from the bottom of my heart, moral of the story, is I want to apologize to you if you've come to the show and the venue has been crappy or the AV has effed up because you deserve better. Not only do I deserve better, you deserve better. You deserve better and you probably don't care, but I care. I care because I'm a standard and I'm just not down. So that is my rant. I'm upset at no one more than I'm upset at myself. And the good news, the silver lining, because I don't want to end this on a negative note, is my favorite restaurant of all time is called Boston Pizza, and it is not in America, it is only in Canada, and I just got takeout from there. So that's good, and I am going to now go, and I'm sorry if this rant was negative or sounded ungrateful. It's not meant to offend anyone. It's not meant to offend anyone that's worked on this tour. I'm extremely grateful and appreciative. I just maybe need to reflect on myself, what my expectations are, and maybe I need to work harder. Maybe I need to work harder.
That's what I'm taking away from this entire situation. So I need to work harder. So I'm gonna go eat pasta now and cry. When food is your best friend. You know, I had a realization today as I was losing my goddamn mind. By no means, like the show went great. The show really, truly went great. So the average person will probably think I'm overreacting, but truthfully, you know what it is? I really care about Superwoman. I really care about what I do. I really care about Team Super. I probably care too much. That's, a, that's the problem. I sound like a crazy person because I care too much. I am well aware there's many other people in my position that would be like, oh, whatever, it's cool. I unfortunately am not that person. I've dedicated my life to a certain standard and quality that I don't think is too high. I think if you lead by example and if you follow a certain standard, you shouldn't expect less. You know, sometimes people convince me my standards are too high or my expectations are too realistic or I should do things, whatever, which I almost know. If I can lead by example, then clearly it's doable. But I had a realization today, and that was that I'm going to DM Nikki, Nikki Minaj. Nikki Minaj followed me a few days ago, and it was quite random because I don't know why. I don't know why she followed me. And today, you know what I thought? Nikki has this video online where she addresses the fact that she walked off a set once. And she's like, everyone called me a diva for walking off set. Got so much bad press for walking off set. She's like, I walked off set because they didn't have the things I needed. They were serving me pickle juice. And it's about pickle juice, the whole video. It's about, she's like, they were serving me pickle juice and I walked off set. And she's like, guess what? Now I don't get served pickle juice anymore. Now when I go to a set, exactly what I need is at that set. And you know, I like giving you an alternate perspective. This industry we're in and I'm not comparing myself to Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is light years above me and beyond me and you know just but I will say that this industry if you allow it to will eat you the mother effing hell alive. If it was up to other people I would do ridiculous things before a show. I would do a show and meet and greet 10,000 people a night. I would do things that are just physically mentally and emotionally taxing because no one would realize that. When I go to a venue expecting certain things, or when I go to a shoot expecting certain things, it's not being a diva. It's about being like, hey, I am doing an extraordinary amount of things today that are chipping away at my soul. And so if I want things a certain way, I hope it can be that certain way because so many people are counting on me to do a good job and this is what I need to do a good job. Today I was like, I get, I get why Nicki Minaj walked off that set. I get it. Because had she never walked off that set, she would have never gotten improvement in her life and people would have just kept giving her crap and expecting her to do a good job. I get it. I'm going to DM her and I'm going to ask her for advice because I feel like I'm so scared of being a diva and being rude. Like I really value being a nice person. But Beyonce even said in her documentary where she said, sometimes it's not possible to be that way in business. I believe it is. Like I will never intentionally be a rude person. I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm saying maybe I need to get better at being like, hey, in the nicest way, if this is not like this, then I will not do this. And I think that's okay. I really do. That's what I'm thinking about right now. That was my realization. I'm sorry if I sound ungrateful. I promise I'm not. Well, it's 12.30 and I have to wake up in five hours, so I'm gonna end this vlog. But before I do that, I wanna end on a positive note. I'm not doing this for you because I feel like I have to do it for me. I just spent eight minutes ranting my life off being negative and now I wanna end on a positive note because I'm still very blessed even when we have bad days. It's okay to have bad days. You don't have to be positive all the time. Being a boss is about embracing every emotion you feel. And I'm not gonna lie and say I'm happy when I'm not. Things I have to be grateful for. This food was bomb. Not everyone around the world gets to have bomb food like this. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that I got to meet so many of you. And you take the time and energy to draw me pictures and make me cards and cheer for me. I'm grateful about that. I'm grateful that every show I've gotten to wear a different outfit. That's spoiled life. That is truly spoiled life. I'm grateful for this bed being super comfortable. And even though I'm only getting five hours of sleep, some people don't get five comfortable hours of sleep. So I'm grateful for that. I am grateful for Kyle, who was crouched down for an hour during my show so the audience wouldn't see him hiding behind a curtain to control the show. I am grateful that I got to even write a book. And in Canada, it's been number one bestseller for three weeks in a row because of all of you. I am very, very grateful that I have friends. I'm not gonna lie, I really miss my friends. I feel super lonely. I really miss Anoshini and I wish she was here. And I totally understand why celebrities that go on tour take their friends because it gets lonely as hell. But I am grateful that even though my friends aren't here right now, I mean, my Kyle's my friend, but he's... He's not here right now, but I mean like my long, long time friends from back in the day. I'm really, I'm really grateful for them and I miss them a lot. And I'm grateful that my nose isn't bleeding because it was yesterday. Let's see how we did today. Thank you so much for joining me on today. Rough day, but a great day, but a rough day. And maybe I just need to chill the F out and go to sleep. I think that's what needs to happen. I'm gonna wash my face. I'm gonna go to bed. No Netflix will happen tonight because I don't have that much sleep on my agenda. But tomorrow is my Vancouver signing and I have a bunch of interviews tomorrow as well. So it's gonna be a hectic day, my last day in Vancouver. That's what's crack lacking. Until tomorrow, <laughs> if you like it, subscribe. If you like it, whatever.
If you like it, subscribe! Meow. This one is for the boys with the booming system, top down AC with the cooling system. When it comes in the club, you blazing up. Got stacks on deck like you're saving up. And you ill, you real, you might got a deal. He bought bottles and he got the right kind of bill. He cold, he dog, he might sell coke. He always in the air, but he never fly coach. He a mother, mother, jerk, jerk, seller of the ship, ship. When he make a drip, drip, kiss him on the lip, lip. That's the kind of dude I was looking for. Wait.